Greetings, Judah. DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey, guys. Um, I want to take a few minutes um, and share a couple of personal thoughts and uh, tie back in to where maybe the thoughts are not as so personal as <laughs> they are feeling uh, to your brother right now. I mean, I'm not in my feelings, but, you know, from a personal standpoint, my opinion about you know, several events that have just happened. And there are a lot of things going on. We know that. But just just some, some events that I think that we need to carefully, you know, consider. And again, you know that Elohim is challenging us to consider. Consider. All consider means is to think. Cognitive thought. Use your mind. Use your brain. Remember when we were kids, when we do something silly, we would, we would get scolded and, uh, you know, chastised. Somebody say, use your brain, son. Use your brain, girl. You know, you have any common sense? Use it. So that's what I'm talking about right now when I say something to consider. You know, we need to use our brains. You know, as, as you look at all of the events that have gone on over the last several years, and I do mean years, probably, <laughs> unfortunately, well over 100 years, but I want to keep it pretty much as recent as I can. So let's go back the last 10 years. And you think about, you know, all of the, the this, this killing that has gone on, you know, by so-called law enforcement people, the very people who are uh, assigned to protect and serve, you know, <laughs> Americans. And their attitudes as it relates to how they conduct themselves as it relates to, to our people, you know, so-called black people. You know, at some point, we have to consider why. You know, why? Well, you know, why is it such a non- what a, what's a good word to use, sisters and brothers? Why is this, why is this such a, a nothing burger? Let me put it like that. In other words, it, it just doesn't even matter to gun down one of our people. And, 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 and not only the killers in uniform don't have a, a, a conscience about it, but the whole judicial system, legislative system, I mean, just flat out do not care. In other words, this whole government system, whether it's the executive, judicial, um, what's the one I mean, legislative, I mean, flat out do not care. And, and if they do want to pretend like they do by giving us little token victories, even then, you know, you, there, there's some undercurrent, some little backdoor deals they're trying to work out. And, and, and just to, to get right to where I'm going, you know, uh, Kim Porter, that, that is the, you know, the, 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 the police officer, the female police officer who killed Dante Wright, murdered him, cold-blooded, claimed she was reaching for a taser when she knew she had her Glock in her hand. Although she's going to lie and the media is going to lie for her. And obviously, you know, the judge conspired, you know, with the DA attorney and the rest of the, again, all a part of the so-called so government system. Let's just call it the government of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's government. The king, the president, whomever. The hidden hand of the elitist hands. And they use, you You know, we, we see them come up with a decision. This woman kills this man. And if you go back and you follow any part of it, you would, they would recognize that there were already two police officers dealing with this man. She kind of got in the middle of it. You know, somehow or another, she felt compelled to, to pull her gun versus thinking, according to her, pull her late, her taser, which again, they lie. And we talked about this many times before. They are the father of lies. They are the children of liars. If you, at this state, you do a trust in these people, then whatever you get from these people, you deserve to get from these people. I'm going to say it to you again. 
Yeshua warned us. He said, these people are liars. They're the children of liars. They lie. I'm talking about those who are confederate with them. Let me break it right down. So-called white, Asian, you know, many Hispanics. You follow me? And including the Canaanites. I'm not going to leave them out of this conversation. Are flat out demonic liars. They lie about everything. Even when they give you the impression that, or you get the impression that they're telling you the truth, they are lying because they never give clean, honest truth. Their truth is laced with something. If they're bringing forward the truth to one of us, brothers and sisters, it's only because they have some other agenda and they know they need to have a certain level of truth to persuade you to let your guards down and then they're going to come right in for the kill. Now, we can learn to, 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 to come into our right minds and collectively become one before Elohim, or we can continue to allow these liars to divide us with half-truths, like Satan did with Eve, and continue to push the spirit of death amongst us. But this wicked devil, under the guise of, you know, innocent white female who just really, you know, she's just such a good, good, you know, human being at the end of the day but who had no conscience of killing this man. Well, yeah, she cried. You, you, you. Look, again, <laughs> when they lie, brothers and sisters, they're going to give you the impression that they feel bad about what they did. And then they're going to walk away and go in some back room and high five each other, giggle and laugh and say, good, you know, good, good job. Good job, lawyers. Good job, attorney. Good job, judge. And I bring the judge into place because what is she? Asian. In other words, white. You say, well, no, she got, you got to be European to be white. You're a damn lie. You, you do not have to be European to be white. You go look at most of these Asians who are in this country. You go look at what they say. If, if, you, if, if, if you look at a birth certificate or identification, let me have, see what it's going to say on there. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be white. They can be brown as me. East Indians, East, they're Asians, and they're still going to have white there. Hispanics, brown as me, still got white on that. Because they call themselves, what you call, uh, honor, uh, what's the word, honorary white. Which means a license to destroy, kill, and steal from Elohim people, the Israelites, us. So here this woman, Kim Porter, gets what equates to, I don't know, the same sentence you probably get for passing bad checks, 16 months in, in prison for murdering a man. Murdering a man. Who had no point, had a gun, pulled a gun, threatened her life or anything like that. She got away with a convenient excuse and then when she got convicted by a jury of her peers, which doesn't matter because this is how the demons work. They are all in Confederate. The demons knew, hey, we'll convict her, but then we're going to leave it up to the judge to sentence her. So when they get before this Asian demon, what does she do? She say, oh, you just, 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 you know, we have to take in consideration, you know, she's been just a, a good police officer for 26 years and da, 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 crying and everything else, you know, and threw, just threw away the verdict as though it was nothing. He gave this woman two years in prison Time served, and, you know, at the end of the day, the equivalent of somebody going to jail for passing bad checks. And, you know, my brothers and sisters, here, right here, uh, again, it's a wicked, demonic city. Metro, and many other all over this planet, but this one right here, New Orleans, Metro. You know, black man, Israelite man, in his truck, pickup truck. <laughs> two police officers shot the man dead because he turned his engine on. He didn't put it in drive, he anything. He kept, he, as a matter of fact, on the footage, he's putting his hands up to let him know, I ain't got nothing in my hands, I'm just going to turn my engine on. He turned the engine on, they, they, they murdered him. What they charged him with? Manslaughter. They got fired, got charged with manslaughter. So they'll probably, you know, again, serve whatever time, but it's not even that. 
And in this case, by the way, just so you know, I'm an equal opportunity exposer of the devils. These two men were black, but they were police officers. And I've said to you guys many times before, you know, many of our people are not what you believe they are. Now, what Yeshua said, you should judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Because far too often, you know, we get called, well, you know, these were black. So now, no, they were police officers. They were part of a confederate, an organization that is trained specifically to be hostile to our people. We are specifically their target. It doesn't matter the race. What In that case, what matters is their fraternity, their organization. In other words, you know, the, 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 the ritual ordination that's involved, just a part of the legislative, the so-called government, these municipalities, these principalities, when our people become a part of them, they swear an oath to fulfill their destiny, and that is to destroy Israel, even if they are Israel. And I don't think anything strange about that, by the way. I don't even think see a conflict in it at all. I see it as nothing but Judas Iscariot manifesting himself again. What the bosses want, I'm going to give the bosses. And then the bosses give me my 30 pieces of silver, and I'll be good. But Elohim will judge their wicked behinds as well as he's, you know, that as Judas was judged. A state of insanity where he went in and, and killed his own self. Amen. And I bring that out, you know, to our people again, because if you're looking for justice, it's not going to happen. Ahmaud Aubrey. You follow me? Then right now they got everybody. Okay, they found these, these mass murderers, these, these damn terrorists. Well, they're guilty. They're guilty. See, it's just, no, it's not just. It's just conflating. It is to take your mind off of where our mind should be. And that is on, again, what time we're living in, the danger that we're in, the, 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 the continual oppression that is being intentionally put upon us in the guise of, you know, you know, these are just little rude agents. These are just anomalies. This is not how they all act. These are just some who, who are just taking things too far. Lies, lies, and lies. Because in the case of Ahmaud Audrey, Audrey, one of those damn guys was a police officer. I want to say it was the father in that little trio of demons. And the DA and the people in that particular city were not even going to charge these men. It took footage coming up later you know, actual footage coming up later for, for, for that even to be brought to the attention of the public and for them to start being held accountable. And this was like six, seven months later. And, you know, and I, I bring this out. You, you and Yeah, I am anti them damn devils. At this late stage in, in you know, in, in our knowledge, if you're willing to wear a, a gun, are you willing to carry a badge? You follow me? And, and 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 where you call yourself, you know, patrolling our people? At this late stage in it, then you ain't nothing but a but a but a but a Roman soldier, you know, cent centurion, you know, acting out the, the you know the the, the the viciousness, you know, of the devils who you're working for. That's what you are. That's what, that's the equivalent of what you have become. And it's a sad day because, because I'm going to tell you something. If that's, and, and, and not only the police officer, I'm talking about the DA. I'm talking about anybody who's affiliated with the oppression of our people. Anyone that's affiliated with the oppression of our people. I'm going to share with you something in the book of Exodus. And I'm, I guarantee, because the word guarantees it, Elohim says there's nothing new. He's never going to change. He Elohim, I'm talking about, same yesterday, today, but, but also, but he says the same thing about Satan. Amen. He will never change. He was a liar from the beginning, and he's the father of lies. He's a thief, he's a murderer, and he's a destroyer. Still kill, destroy. And if you or have joined in a league with them, a let, how you become aligned yourself with them, 
through taking some type of oath for them to be a part of their enforcement system, then there's going to be a reckoning time. There's going to be a reckoning time. You can believe that. And because these demons are not going to do it here. Their judges are not going to do it. Their district attorney is not going to do it. You know, their, their so-called city governments are not going to do it. And surely on a national level, they're not going to do it. After all, they're president. They're president because he damn sure is not mine. Well, yes, he is. You're an American citizen. Since when? <laughs> Thought we already had that exercise recently. Constitutionally, no, we, no you're not. You're Israelite, you're not. You're just duped into thinking that you are. To be an American means that you would have all the rights of an American. All of the rights of an American. And you're simple-minded enough to believe that, then that's that old song that come back to my mind, old George Strait. I know he don't mind me using it. He said he had some oceanfront property in Arizona. Oceanfront property in Arizona that he'd be willing to sell you real cheap. In other words, he's saying, you're a damn fool. And I don't disagree with him. But it's time for reflection, brothers and sisters. It's time for consideration. It's time for us to take a step back and be honest about what we're seeing. And I'm not talking about, yeah, we know. No, 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 no. Because, see, people, when you know better, you do better. You can't say that you know, and then you just uh, nothing changes. I'm aware of it. Where or if you're aware that you're under siege, you're aware that 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 there is a spirit of debt coming against you. For you to admit that you are aware of that and you do nothing to avoid it makes you simple-minded at best and a fool at worst. So how can you say you're aware of it and you do absolutely nothing to avoid it? To, 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 to move yourself, move your family, move your people away from it and get them out of harm's way. That makes you a fool. That makes you a fool. It was really even worse. Most of our people won't even say anything. Or if they say something, they start with these generalities. Well, you got to understand, well, you know, or, 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 they, or they use the lie of the devil. Well, you know, Black people do commit a lot of crime. Everybody, every people, depending on what they decide is crime or not, commits many crimes. You're only a fool will repeat their lies, especially when those lies are being applied to them. I mean, I'll take it again, back to the garden, back to Eve. Satan regurgitated a lie to her. You know what she did? She repeated his lie. He made a statement. She repeated his statement. But what she didn't understand, his statement was full of manipulation. And her innocence lied her ignorance. Because she didn't take time to consider, why is this devil asking me this? Why is this devil even talking to me? Why am I even listening to this devil? It's the question that many of us never ask. Why? Why? Why are we the target? Our behavior in terms of what you would call human behavior, if you want to consider them as human, is no different than them. They, there's nothing that we do that they don't do. Nothing that we do that they are not guilty of. I mean absolutely nothing. But when it comes down to singling us out, Oh, man, you would think we were the only ones who ever committed a crime. We were the only ones who never took care of their children. We're the only ones who, who, who you know, abused our wives or our husbands or what have. You would think we were the only ones that ever quit a job or the only ones that, that ever did anything. You know, the challenge that, that we all have in front of us, you know, is a basic one. It's, again, it's about considering. We need to consider what's going on. We really need to step back and evaluate it very thoroughly. That's what consider is, considering. We need to evaluate what is going on 
And in that evaluation, ask why, why? Continue to ask yourself, why, 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 why us, why us? When the rest of this, this nation is guilty of all the things that we, they accuse us of being guilty of. And in many cases, I'm not, we are guilty of it. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, we have taken upon the ways of the heathen. So I'm not, I'm not talking about hands that are, that are, that are clean, hands that do not share blood. I'd have to be a fool to not look at the wretchedness of our own people. That's, but that's not my question. My, my, that, that's not, that's the question I'm asking is, why are they singling us out for the things that they do and their actions towards us are totally different? And when certain things happen to us, there's an indifference about them in terms of, well, you know, black kills black or they probably deserve it. They must have done something. I mean, even with this man who they murdered sitting in this truck, you know, they had the dash and say, well, he was parked in front of a suspected drug house. So sitting in your car in front of a suspected drug house is a license for you to get murdered now? If you're an Israelite, because I can assure you that that's not the kind of behavior that's happening in these other drug houses, these opioid houses and every other kind of house all over this damn country. You're not going to get shot down by the police for just sitting there. And the media damn sure not going to paint this narrative of what well, he must have been thinking about doing something. Well, let's kill him because, I don't know, maybe, maybe he might be thinking about. I don't know, he's sitting in his truck. He's homeless. Doesn't have a weapon. Committed no crime. There's no report of him committing a crime. But since he decided to turn on his engine, according to them, let's murder him. Oh, and by the way, let's just call it manslaughter. Because after all, you know, maybe those men who murdered him thought their safety was in jeopardy. So sitting in your car, turning your engine on, <laughs> makes supposedly... <laughs> We are the target. We are the target. We are, we are singled out. We are persecuted unjustly. Murdered indiscriminately. Robbed without conscience. Because of one singular thing. And you need to take some time, sisters, brothers, and consider what I'm saying. You know, you need to get out of your feelings, get out of your emotion, get out of all of that stuff. All those, what I would call childlike, childlike theories and ask yourself a question. Why is it your people when they are suspected or are guilty of something is, is treated totally different than any other ethnic group? What is so special about us that makes us, you know, you know, those whom they feel so willing and justified, for lack of a better word, pushing their, their, their crap on us, their viciousness towards us. You know, if you know why cog cognitive thought, co critical thinking, you should be asking, what is it about us? And, and you've got to get beyond what they're just jealous of us. It's deeper than that. Well, you know, they, they hate us because they're not us. It's, even, it's deeper than that. And I'm going to tell you something, sisters and brothers. If you refuse to go before Elohim and you refuse to go to the book, then I guess you'll just walk in your own self-deception or you'll never come to the understanding of what's going on. And, you know, don't be surprised. One of the days if it's, you get pulled over and you get shot because, the, because you got a broken taillight. You get murdered because, you know, you didn't want to get out of your car because you didn't commit a crime. You get shot down because... 
you know, a murder because you turned the engine on. Or you got murdered because you were jogging down the street. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when that time does come, you know, you will consider. <laughs> but unfortunately, it would be too late. And, you know, and again, not to conflate this issue here. But even, you know, distractions, distractions, distractions. They commit atrocity over here with, with Kim Porter and Dante Wright by letting her go more or less 16 months for murdering him. Then they distract you by, oh, well, Ahmaud Arbery's killers, they, you know, they're going to go to prison now. For real, for real. I know y'all convicted them over in the civil court, but now we're going to convict them again in the federal court. So for real, for real. Look over here, not over there. Look over here. Don't don't look over there. Look over here. And what we do, most of us see, see, I told you. See, they see, I told you. They're talking about, you know, they don't hold whites accountable and others accountable for harming us. Look. I can assure you, they had every intention to let those three men go to. I already said it. They weren't even going to charge these men at all if there were not videos that were released about what had happened on that particular day. Hell, they had murdered a man and months have passed and no one were no one was arrested. How could that be? That wasn't done in the dark. That was done in the light. They just hid it in plain sight. Because why? Who gives a damn? And you're not asking, you know, the question. You're not looking for the question behind the question. And the question behind the question is why? Now, our book told, tells us that we would be hated by all nations for our name's sake. But see, when we bring that out, oh, no, that's not what that means. Then you tell me what it means then. Who else are hated solely because of who they are? We just talked about, you know, that we commit no crimes disproportionately to than the crimes they commit. You can go back and look at the statistics. White kills white people kill white people as way more than, than, than black people kill white people. So, but yet when it comes down to, to justifying killing us and we we cry out about it, well, black kill black, and y'all ain't said, wait a minute, but white kill whites. Asians kill Asians. Hispanics kill Hispanics. Mexican kill Mexicans. You go to a fucking Squaraz, excuse my language, but you go down there to, to, to what is that, uh, Squaraz, Mexico, you know, down there on the border, the the the, 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 the El Paso, a uh, Mexican border, them damn cities down there, you tell me them Mexicans not killing each other down there? Like poop going through a goose? Look, we're not buying your lies. At least those of us who are in our right mind. Now, I don't know, maybe your judgment is clouded because, you know, you, you let them put the poison in you. Maybe now your judgment is really clouded. Maybe your ability to, 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 to think, you know, and focus and concentrate has been altered. Maybe that's your lot. Maybe that's the rat. Maybe that's the reason. I, who can say? Only time will tell. But please understand that the lies that you're being told that it's all about criminal behavior, brothers and sisters, it is time for you to wake up and stop and think like a damn adult. Because this childlike thinking and mentality that, oh no, they, they getting what they deserve, that's foolish. Nobody else gets, we're the only people who literally, according to their justice system, or injustice, if you let me tell it, are the only ones who deserve to get what we deserve. But when it comes down to them, well, we we not gonna talk about that. We're not. We really, you know, that was something else. Books say you'll be hated by all people for their name's sake, for your name's sake, our name's sake, Israel. The people of the book. Let me be clear. The people of the book. The people of the Bible. For you who do not understand, if you're a Negro in America, all Negro scattered throughout this earth, then. Highly likely you are Israel, one of the tribes. And your people, wherever they are, our people, wherever they are, in the blackest black Africa, I can assure you if there's a Negro amongst them, 
that person, those people are being oppressed, targeted. The book says that they would hate them for their name's sake. And no matter where you go on this flat earth, you're going to see our people being oppressed like no other. If your eyes were open and your understanding was proper, quite frankly, if you gave a damn, if you cared to know. And that's a big problem with our people. Most of our people don't care to know. That's what, that's what Isaiah was warning us of. He said, the ass knows his owner, the ox knows his master. He said, but my people, they don't know. And not only are, do my people not know, they don't even consider what is happening. In other words, they don't give it real thought. They just take the easy answer. Well, you know, they got what they deserve. Nobody else get what they deserve, but somehow or another, we are expected to be able to take the hits. And it doesn't matter whether it's economic, incarceration. You know, we were talking a couple of weeks ago. This book right here, the so-called documents of the United States, right? The great, the great, <laughs> American documents, the book. And they were talking about the 13th Amendment and how that we were liberated, emancipated by the very man who said he didn't give a damn whether or not we, that America had slaves or not. All he wanted to do was end the war. That's Lincoln, quote unquote. He said, I don't give a damn if they're free. I don't give a damn if they stay slaves. I just want this war to end and I just want this union saved. That's, that's the great emancipator. That's his statement. And then they came up with the 13th Amendment. But inside that 13th Amendment, they said, well, you're free except if you commit a crime. And then they came up with all kind of criminal behavior, made up laws, made the law up, created their own laws, created laws that were directed at us, intentionally directed at us and our behaviors. Not that our behavior was any different. We had a whole bunch of lazy white devils who were not working in 1866. Bunch of just a bunch of, you know, incest driven, <laughs> wife beaten, lying, thieving, murdering devils. A bunch of them. But they weren't arrested for not having a job. They weren't arrested for just, you know, sitting around. But we were. We were. They created the law to say if you didn't have a job, that was a crime. When you were just coming off the slave plantation, and guess what? Nobody was hiring you. Now, if you agreed to stay on their plantations as a sharecropper, which means slavery by another name, by the way, you were good. But if you said, no, I'm free, I'm going to make my own decision. I'm not going to be your dog, your, your horse, your cattle, your two-thirds of a human being any longer. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Then you better have a job, but we ain't hiring your ass. And quite frankly, if you have your own business, we're going to make sure we do everything to, to, uh, to, to un undermine your business, sabotage your business, to make sure your business is not successful, and therefore you have no option but to turn back to try to figure out what the hell going on in the process. We're going to put you right back on these plantations. And if you don't think that worked, do you realize that in in right in, by the, by, at the beginning, at the, I'll give you a number, around the 1850s, right prior to the Civil War, or pretty much most of the time, do you know that there was probably a little bit over a half a million people in slavery in the South? A little bit over half a million slaves. Just so you have a number, about a half a million, 500,000, 600,000, give or take, slaves. At emancipation, that was pretty much the number. A little bit over half a million. That was 1865. 2011, you want to know how many black and Hispanic men are in prison right now? Right about the neighborhood of 1.6 million. So we were freed, according to the 13th Amendment. Then they put a clause in there saying, and except for committing a crime. Then they come up with a wicked judicial system, process governmental system. And now today, when we're supposed to be free, three times more of our people are in prison, which is another form of slavery than we were when we were actually enslaved. 
Nobody talks about that. So how did we get free and now the number is three times as high as it was when we were supposed to be enslaved? Not supposed when we were enslaved, but now we're supposedly free. And I just shared with you over the last, what, 30 some odd minutes, the wicked judicial system, the unjust system, including the so-called president of this country who went out of his way to come up with his Biden law, three strike law. You know, crack cocaine, you know, one to 100 law, that kind of just madness singling us out. And yet many of our people are sitting over there saying, well, if they wouldn't if they didn't commit the crime, then they wouldn't be doing no time. Like none of our people are incarcerated who are innocent. Or do you really believe that lie? Well, no, you know, but many of them are guilty. And. Again, your brother not talking about guilt, not guilt. My brother, your brother talking about disproportionately being persecuted. Disproportionately being persecuted. So-called blacks and Hispanics make up something around the neighborhood about, this is their lying numbers, but adult, you know, male, female, blacks and Hispanics, more than likely Israelites, make up somewhere in the neighborhood talking about adult age probably about 15, 16% of the population, but yet they make up almost 80% of the prison population. Yeah, when you look at criminal statistics, our the, the crime stats say that proportionally, we're, what, what happens in our communities or the crimes that we commit are, are pretty much comparably the same in their communities. if they even show their numbers. Because when you start really looking for their numbers, they hide their numbers or they conflate it or deflate their numbers. You know, those two black, supposedly men who killed this brother a couple of days ago, they, man, they had their asses, their faces on the damn news. I mean, quicker they can get them out there. Had there been two, you know, white men or any other ethnic group, you, you've been still waiting today to see their pictures. We've all seen that. We always know when, 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 when those demons commit crime because they never show who they are. You got to wait days, if not weeks, to see who they are. They take them off of Facebook. They take them down from everywhere. But when it's one of us, the camera is right there the moment it happens. The good Americans treating you like a good American. But I'm going to tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Justice is coming. Elohim is going to take vengeance. He's going to give them double for what they did to us or what they are doing to us. But your, my concern is, again, why aren't we acting? Why aren't we considering? Why, why are our hearts so hardened to these basic truths? Who you are, These basic truths about all these institutions that are set up, prison institution, government institution, religious institutions, corporate, I didn't say that, institutions, and all of them working together. Even the military institutions are working together. Confederate to do everything in their power to destroy us. The book is full of answers to that. But most of our people, we, we refuse it because, again, in our darkness, in our own self-darkness, in our own self-denial, when we braid, when, when men like myself, you know, and some women, bring, raise these questions up, our people make more excuses you know, for them than they make for themselves. And the one place our people will never turn is to the book. If they turn to the book, they come, they talk, talking some religious, you know, stuff that someone threw in there, probably added to the book about loving your enemies and, you know, and, you know, and if you walk, you, you let Jesus guide you, you'll be all right. You need to go to church. That's your problem. 
Going to church, yeah, that, that is our problem. If you meant going to church, that is our problem. Supporting these institutions, you know, ignoring that these institutions are set there and are, are, are sitting there targeting our people, yeah, that is our problem. But beyond all of that, again, back to the why. The why is, have you not considered that maybe it's deeper than what you think? That maybe it's deeper than just your skin color? Because after all, there are many on this, on, 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 in this particular country with their skin color that no one brings any harm to them. Most of your East Indians here are this color. A lot of your Arabs are almost this color. Most of your Africans, who they do nothing to, are, are pretty much this color. And that means even, you know, from the islanders, you don't see them harming those people like that. Go to little, Italy, I mean, little, little Haiti and little Cuba and places like that. They ain't messing with them folks. But when it comes to us, oh man, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's open season. Because they know what you refuse to know. They know who we are. That's why whenever something really bad happens, you know, they want to us, you know, pray for me and, uh, you know, uh, or they go get a religious man, a woman, whatever, one of them ordained devils to come and speak, you know, and, and you know, and, 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 and calm the people down. And, and then when one of these demons, the T.D. Jakes and the rest of these demons come together, then they, 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 they lord them with all kind of, isn't he a great man? He, you know, he, he's, he's the new Billy Graham. And, or they go get these, these, these wicked le legislative devils under the guise of lawyers who come there again. You know, we, you know, we, you know, we're going to work with the family and we're going to work with this injustice and, and we just want what's right for these families. Never realizing that it's all a scam, all a game, all a con, and you're the pawn. We are the pawns, including those of us who, again, are working for these wicked law enforcement agencies. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about people in administrative jobs, people who are just you know, processing paperwork. I'm talking about who, these demons who are out here enforcing this wickedness. And then who condone it and encourage it and turn their heads the other way, you know, when this wickedness is happening. Look the other way. And all of their constituents, those who vote these people in office and all those who make excuses, you know, you know, to, 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 to justify this wickedness. Talking about those demons. And, you know, and, I, and just so you know, when I was talking about conflating, you know, there's one other thing, you know, again, you know, our people, you know, especially our men, young and old brothers, you know, at some point you're going to have to understand that, you know, the time for games and, and participating in games and wasting your time watching games or playing games, you, you're going to have to wake up and understand that's it's time to put that away. It's time to walk away from that. You know, I, I, I know I was looking, they were talking about not even coming with football season. As We talked about the wickedness that went on in, in the Super Bowl and all that, but now they're going to come up with football all year round. X, or the XFL and the United States Football League, all these things. So when it's not football, it's going to be football. Why do you think that is? It's to keep our men, our people distracted. Where everybody else is going to be watching, everybody else don't have our problems, brother. So that, again, that's your problem. When you should be thinking like a man, you're thinking like the beast, like the heathens. We play the game, they own the game. They own the teams. It doesn't, and that doesn't even matter because this is not about wealth. This is not a, I don't, I don't get caught up in that Black wealth bullshit. Our reward will come in its time. Many of us were rewarded. Elohim says he'll sustain us here. He'll sustain us here. I don't, I don't chase after, you know, their wealth. I trust Elohim to provide. 
Yahuwah. What is it? Java, I believe it says that way. Elohim is my provider. I'm good with that. Mind, body, and my Rahuk. I'm good with Elohim being my provider. And he'll give me the mind to get the things that I need. And what I can't have access to, he'll have his angels bring it to me. In the form of men and women who love the truth. And those of us who are representing and who will stand for the truth. But brothers, we don't have the time to be distracted like that. You know, we should be, you know, teaching our children, preparing ourselves, stirring up, you know, good for these times to come. Talking about resources, food, medical supplies, sanitary supplies for the war to come. The purge that you will be the target of, you and your children, your woman, your man. Our minds need to be there. You know, you sisters, you know, I'm talking about, those, you know, those sisters who will listen to this channel, but you don't do anything. When will you consider your own behavior? When, you be, when will you be honest enough to say, I'm being dishonorable? When will you stand up and say, time out for Jesus being my husband? My man is the one that's, that's right here in the flesh who loves Elohim. That's who he gave me. He put me here to be there for him. When will you be honest enough to, 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 to accept your role and understand that he made me a woman for a reason? It wasn't an accident. It wasn't a hate. A, a, it wasn't an act of hate. It was an act of love. Not to exploit him, marginalize him, lie to him, manipulate him, entrap him, ensnare him. No, to stand with him in my proper role as his assistant. When? When you accept that. When will you do it? Time is running out. I know you think you have time. You're working on it. Like Sister Hammond said the other day, these sisters over here talking about their work in progress. The type of work they're doing, you know what I'm saying? By the time they get to where they're going, shit, the show will be over with. And your brothers, again, you know, distracted, you know, with children things, things that that little 10-year-old, 12-year-old boy should be doing, and you're 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, Still playing the games that 12 year olds are playing. You might as well get a bag of marbles. You would think it'd be ridiculous right now if 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 I saw five little tw seven year old boys out there playing marbles. Some of you remember marbles, shooting marbles. I would look at that and say, Oh, they're out there playing. But if I saw a 35 year old, 45 year old, 50 year old man out there shooting marbles, I would think something's wrong with him. I'm like, What is the hell going on with him? Why he's out there playing marbles? You don't have anything better to be doing with his time? And that's what you're doing when you're sitting there letting games and Xbox, PlayStation, whatever it is, Madden, you know, the NBA, whatever, distract you when all hell is breaking out all around you. And many of you brothers have no plan. If a, just, just if Elohim was to bring forth wherever you live, a massive tornado that would just destroy everything in your town. Most of you guys be right over there in the government line asking the government, you know, to give you some uh, uh, some blankets, some water, some 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 canned goods, and shelter. And yet you got time to be playing games. You got time to be distracted. And yet you want to call yourself a man. Men don't conduct themselves like that. Men are providers and protectors, not time wasters. They don't waste their time. Time to, to come up, to ante up, as they say. Now I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 10 because I don't want this video to run too long. 
Because I notice when they're too long, guys won't listen. You, you're too busy being busy about being busy. It's not important to, enough to you to stop and just take some time to listen, to reflect, to maybe try to increase your knowledge, increase your understanding, you know, so that you may be better prepared to serve your family, serve your community, and most importantly, to be used by Elohim, the one you claim to believe in, many of you. But I'm going to read to you Exodus chapter 10. Elohim willing, you know, if he gives me something additional to add as I read through, I will. But this is when Elohim is, has judged the wicked nation. As he's judging this wicked nation. And that's why you might want to consider, at least take a moment and listen to the rest of this. Because this is how it went down then, and this is how it's going to go down now. Just so you know. Sister, same thing. This is how it went down then. Elohim does not change. He said, I'm the same yesterday, day, and forever. Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. This is how it happened then. And I'm, I can assure you, we're in these last days. In other words, the end is near. And this is how it's going to happen. But right now, it's already happening. The book of Exodus. Torah, I might add. We constantly tell you guys, go to the Torah. Go to, you think that means thou shalt not kill. The Torah, <laughs> that's a commandment. That's not the Torah. Let me give you an idea of what your Torah sounds like. The Torah, Exodus chapter 10. And Yeshua said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, meaning the king, the person that's in charge, the president, the prime minister. For I have hardened, I've made his heart hard in the heart of his servants, hard, that I might show these signs before them. What does that mean? These people are hating us and yet they continue to say, well, well, making up excuses is because Elohim is judging them. He has made their hearts hard towards us, brothers and sisters. So when we look at them thinking that they're going to change or we can vote them in or vote them out, think again. And he said, not only the, 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 the people who are at the very top, but all of their servants, that's the judicial, that's the leg legislative, the executive, and all of those municipalities, all who are working in confederate together to oppress us and yet not hold themselves accountable when they're doing the same things and in many cases, much worse. That's what this means. Elohim has hardened their hearts. In other words, Elohim has, is judging them. Verse 2. And that you may tell in the ears of your son and in the ears of your son's son what things I have made happen in Egypt or Babylon or America or the West, however you want to say it. And the signs which I have done among them that they may know that I am Yahuwah. What does that mean? That we're supposed to be sharing this information. I'm supposed to share it with you. You should be sharing it with your families. Men, you're supposed to be sharing it with your sons. Not sitting down there playing PlayStation with them. You're supposed to be sharing with them what is going on around them. That's going to affect them. The crimes that are, that are sitting there waiting to ensnare, to entrap your daughters. You're supposed to be spending time with them. Walking them through these things. So that they understand the times that they're in. And so they don't fall into the traps of being and listening and, 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 and being partners with these heathens and learning to hate themselves because they are believing the heathen lies about themselves. Verse 3. And Moses and Aaron, Aaron came unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus, Yahuwah of Israel, how long, said, thus says Yahuwah of Israel, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me and let my people go that they may serve me? See, that's what we're saying right now. And they hear us. That's why they got all these distractions. That's why they're putting up, trying to put the, you know, paws in our bodies. Because they're trying to shut us down. They don't want us talking about this talk. They don't mind you talking about Jesus. They don't mind you talking about your religion. 
you know, your Sunday worship. They have no problem with that. Matter of fact, they encourage you to do that. But the moment you start talking about that you are the people of the book and that you that you are not allowed to participate in, in their wickedness and calling them out for their wickedness, uh-uh. Nope, time out, time out. No, 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 you're gone too far. You're an extremist. You've gone way too far. Lock them up, shut them down, cancel their channel. Whatever you got to do, kill them, distract them, give them some more football. They're easily distracted. Give them some more games to play. Give them some more entertainment. Give them some more food. Give them another holiday to celebrate. Give them jubilee. That ought to quiet them down for a moment. And we like... Because we don't understand, we just buy right into it as an act of love. Give them Black History Month. <laughs> but let's not talk about the wickedness that we did to them. Let's just tell them about the things that some of their kind did, like their kind can only do but so much. So we need to recognize them whenever they do something important. Because after all, you know, they're criminal minded. They don't really do anything constructive. So when one of them do something constructive, then let's make sure we highlight that. For 28 days. And they'll be happy. They'll celebrate it. And they'll feel good about it. And we'll keep our foot on their necks. And unfortunately. They are right. Verse 4. Else if you refuse to let my people go. Behold tomorrow I will bring locusts. Unto your coast. Locusts. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the remnant of that which is escaped, which, re which remains unto you from the hell. And they shall eat every tree which grows for you out of the field. And they shall fill your houses and the houses of your servants and the houses of Israel, meaning these wicked nations. In other words, he's saying famine is going to come. He's going to use insects to destroy their crops. Same pesticides they're using to, to, to claim to kill it. The same pesticides inside their food is going to kill them. And if we're not careful, us right along with them. Verse 6. Verse 7. No, verse 6. And they shall fill your houses and the house of all of your servants and the house of all of Israel. I'm sorry, all of Egypt. Which neither your fathers nor your fathers fathers have seen since the day that they were upon this earth until this day and he turned himself and he went out from Pharaoh see these people believe that you know that's why they always talking about their forefathers and uh, how great America is and America is the greatest nation we have the greatest constitution the greatest documents lie in line line because that's what they fought you see that's he said see nothing new under the sun the same thing that you see these heathens saying about their forefathers these non-Israelites same stuff that they say to us when we confront them about their behavior and how they brag about it, that's the same thing they were doing in Egypt. And Elohim told Moses and Aaron to call them out for it as I am and many like myself are calling them out about it. And we shouldn't be the only ones doing it. Every Israelite, male and female, should be doing right alongside with us, calling them out and coming out, not partaking in it with them. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? The men go, and they, they said, Let the men go till they may serve Yahuwah. Know you not that Israel is, Israel is destroyed? See, even America knows that, that this country is dead. They, they know that it's, it's, it's lost. They know it. That's why they commit suicide. Hooked on opioids, ODing on opioids, quitting jobs, going around acting crazy and out of their minds. They know America is over with. They know it's done, but they, they but they can't find it in themselves to say it out loud. But if they do say it, they say it kind of half-assed. This ain't the country it used to be. We need to get Donald Trump back. We, you know, we need we need Trump. Dumb, stupid idiots. As dumb and stupid as those who said they need Biden. Two peas in a pod. Two tits on the same damn cow. Verse 8. 
And Moses and Aaron were brought again in front of Pharaoh. And he said unto them, Go and serve Yahuwah, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, and with our flocks and with our herds we will go. And we will hold a feast unto Yahuwah. So that's, that's then with their condition. Well, we'll let some of y'all go. We'll promote some of y'all. We'll put some of y'all in positions of influence. We know we'll let, we'll do this for some of y'all, but not all of y'all. So this is what Pharaoh was saying. Well, okay, y'all want to go, but who you exactly do you want to go? Most say all of us. You see, that's our problem as a people. Well, you know, we're too busy looking at ourselves, too busy looking at those who are, we have esteemed over ourselves. I don't have to be rich as long as LeBron is. I don't have to have wealth as long as Serena has it. I don't need to lead as long as we got Obama. I don't have to be strong as long as I got Oprah and Michelle. I'm talking about Obama. The lie we tell ourselves to justify our ineptitude, our lack of love for the people. See, we, if, if, if you are an Israelite, so-called, maybe even better, if you are a believer in Elohim, you should never only think about yourself. You should always think about your people. Always. Even the wicked ones. When he asked Moses, okay, Moses, I know you want to get out of here, but exactly who you want to take with you. Moses said, everybody. He didn't leave the older ones behind. He didn't disregard them because they were gray-headed. He didn't leave the women behind because they were less than. He didn't leave the children because they would get in the way or be a distraction. He didn't kill them because I ain't ready for that kind of responsibility. He said, all of us, all of us. He said, every last, and not only us, but everything, all we want, we want to go and we want to take our property with us when we leave. We don't want your hands on nothing that is ours. That's what Moses told the king. Verse 10. And he said unto him, of them, let you who will be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones. Look to it for evil is before you. Not so. Go now that you that go now you that are men and serve Yahuwah for that you did desire for that's what you wanted. And they were driven out before Pharaoh's presence. You see how that's how they, they want to steal our children. See, Moses told him, I want everybody. And as Pharaoh said, well, you can go with the men, but we keeping your children. Isn't that what you see what's going on right now with our children? You can't chastise your child. You can't educate your child. You can't pull your child out of these wicked systems. Or you can't demand that your child is not taught, you know, about homosexuality and all of this other stuff that they're pushing, these wicked agendas that they're pushing on our children. If you speak out, you say something against any of that, then your child is ostracized. Think about it. They want to tell you how to raise your child. Your child. The wicked heathens don't let us tell them how to raise their children, but them wicked heathens come up with what curriculum on how to raise ours. And you know what? <laughs> as sad as it is, we go along with it. They would never go along. When we said we want to talk about critical race, racism, and we want to bring up the things that their ancestors did to our ancestors, they said, no, we're not teaching any of that in the schools. That's not going to happen. But they have the audacity to tell you that your child needs to learn about homosexuality and you had better be good with it. And why do you think that is? Why do you think that they feel like they have the right to tell us how to raise our children, but we have no right in how, to, how they should raise theirs? No voice in it. At all. Unless it's an agreement with them, they don't want to hear what we have to say. So they're going to tell Moses, you can leave with the men, but leave your children behind. You know, yeah, right. You have to be a wicked man if you're going to leave your children to the hands of these devils. And many of our men, unfortunately, 
are just that wicked. They care less what their children are being taught in these classrooms. They let, your, they let, our, men let our children and mothers too go in these classrooms eight, nine hours a day. And then when these children get home, they take no time to, 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 to re-educate their children. The process, what they learn. And they surely don't take any time to open up this book and teach their children out of this book. They think this book has the answers. And this is the book of the oppressors. This book they reject. And yet this is the book of their redeemer. Their deliverer. Their emancipator. Our emancipator. Embrace this book that oppresses us, rejects this book that liberates us, free us. How weird, how odd, yet true. Let me continue. Praise Yah. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Israel for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Israel. I'm sorry, stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt, which you can might say America and in the West and all of America's allies, whether they be in Africa, South America, Australia, you know, Asia, it doesn't matter. All of them are confederate. He says, stretch out your hands, son, us, stretch out your hands against these people. They just stretch your hands out and call the locusts, call the famine, call the pestilence, call the diseases, call, call, call the plagues. They will come at your voice. He said, telling us, call it out. Call it out. <laughs> Amen. He said, call him here. I'm sorry. Not call it out, but call him here. He said, don't you pray for this land. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Israel, for the, over the land of Egypt, for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of that land and eat and all the hell that is left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And Yahuwah brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning and the east wind brought the locust. You see all this weather that's going on? All this unusual weird weather that's killing crops, drying up crops. You follow me? Bringing forth locusts and every kind of thing else that's going on out here. Killing the cattle. Killing the, 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 the poetry, killing all of it. That's Elohim's work. You, we over there getting told, you think it's just, you know, acts of nature, natural disasters. No, 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 no. That is Elohim's work. And there's nothing that anyone can do to stop it. Pray for America? No, you better pray for yourself, brothers and sisters, and pray for your children. You better pray, you know, that Elohim comes soon. Because when they start to die, they're going to start to kill. They're already dying and they're already killing. And like I said before, we are the target. And we all know that. And the locusts went over the land of, of Egypt and rested on the coast of Egypt. And, and they were very grievous. Before them were so much locusts that neither that as they, neither after them shall be such. For they were covered, the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land, and the fruit of the trees which, was, which the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, nor any herbs in the field throughout all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron in haste. And he said, I have sinned against Yahuwah and against you. Well, these heathens, these so-called white Asians, Hispanics, and whatever else, will they repent? Will they go before Elohim and admit that they have sinned against us? Moses, I mean, Pharaoh did. I bet you they won't. And that's why Elohim is putting a plague throughout the whole earth. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray. My sin, forgive you, I pray. He said, there, now therefore forgive, I pray you, my sin only this once, and entreat Yahuwah that he may take away from me this death. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated Yahuwah. And Yahuwah turned a mighty strong west wind and took away the locusts 
and cast them into the sea. And there remained, remained not one locust in all the coast of, of Egypt. So these people know that. That's why they, they, they treat us because they know that we have the power of Elohim in us. They know that we are the chosen people. That's why they, they, they push all this debauchery on us. That's why they, they, they got us so distracted and they make, you know, a, a, a mockery out of our people. They know we're the people. They exploit us in every way. They, they do everything in their power to turn us away from Yahuwah and turn us towards Jesus, religion, and atheism. And because we don't know who we are and the power that we have in us, then instead of us speaking up, we shut up or we pray for them. We pray their prayers. God bless America. And you have said unto Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness that may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hands. I'm sorry, verse 20. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And again, that's what I'm saying to you guys earlier, that you're wasting your prayers on these unbelievers. Because see, Elohim has a lot of these people hard. A lot of these people are telling you, I'm a work in progress or, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Do you realize that that is Elohim hardening their heart? Y'all know that? A lot of these people who say, I don't believe in no Bible and I don't need to hear all that. Do you know that's all, that is Yahuwah, Elohim, hardening their hearts? That's why they're saying what they're saying to us? Do you realize that? That's why they're doing it. You think it's the devil. Many of you think that's the devil. Many of you just think that's just man. Look, you think, what, I'm telling you, the Most High could put something in your mind that causes you to reject him. And you don't even know it. You know that you're not doing what you're supposed to do, but you never consider the consequences of what's going to happen to you for not doing it. You don't even consider that anymore. You think about it, and then you turn right back around and do it again. You think about it, you go to church, and turn right back around and do it again. You pray, think about it, and go right back and do it again. You repent, think about it, and go right back and do it again. And you think that that's just you making decisions. No, sister. No, my brother. That is your whore who has hardened you against him. As he did with Pharaoh. He, is, he will do it. When you're in rebellion or disobedience, when you take, uh, 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 and you're complacent about it, I got time. I'm a work in progress. Whatever you say, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. When you take that approach, just understand Elohim is listening. And not only Elohim listening, Elohim will make your heart so hard that you might under, you may have the knowledge, but you'll never have the understanding of what you're doing. You'll never consider the consequences until it's far, far, far too late. Because that's exactly what happened to Moses and his servants, and that's happening to America and all the Americas and all of America's cohorts all over this planet. Right now, that's what's happening to them. Elohim is hardening their heart. So they can't stop it. These things are over the darkness. Watch this, verse 21. He said, and we hardened heart because they were not free, you know, Israel to go. And at verse 21, and, and Yahuwah said unto Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward the heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. And they saw not one another, neither, neither rose any from his place. Sounds like quarantine to me. Stay inside, don't come out. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. See, all of us who are holding on, who are taking a stand, who are resisting these mandates, who are not following, you know, after the traditions of men, not participating in all of their little festivities and all the other little distractions that they have out of there. Elohim said, we're going to stay in light. The rest of you all, if you want to be with them, you're going to be right there in the darkness with them. And when Elohim judged them, he's going to judge you with them. Just remember that. Verse 24, And Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go serve Yahuwah. 
Only let your flocks and your herd be stayed and let your little ones also go with you. See, now he's willing to, 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 to say, okay, keep, we're going to keep your stuff, but y'all can go. We've heard that before. But see, I'm going to tell you something about them wicked heathens. See, they have stolen our lands. And when we say reparations, I ain't giving y'all. This, this is Moses right here saying, I ain't giving them nothing. You can take, y'all can leave. I don't care what y'all do. I mean, we tried to take your children and that ain't working for us. Because you got men like Moses and Aaron speaking to Elohim on behalf of them. The DFGs, many of us all over the place. Sister Hammond and many of the, the women of Elohim all over the place. So, so so I can't I can't destroy your children. I can't keep your children in my corrupt system because of what you you guys are speaking and praying. So we're gonna keep all your stuff. I don't even say, oh no, you watch this, praise you <laughs> And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Okay, let your flocks and your herds be stayed, but let your little ones go with you also. And Moses said, You must give us also the sacrifices the burnt offering that we may sacrifice unto Yahuwah. Our cattle also shall go with us, and there shall not be a hoof be left behind. But therefore must we take to serve Yahuwah, and we know not with what we must serve Yahuwah until we get in front of Yahuwah. In other words, our people should take possession. We want our reparations, and we there ain't nothing else we want you guys to tell us about it. We want everything that belongs to us. Everything. And brothers and sisters, when you pray, pray that way. Elohim, give us everything that belongs to us and destroy these demons and this wicked system of government. And do not compromise. When you pray, you pray like that, brothers and sisters. If you want to see, if you want to be free, you want to be redeemed, you don't pray for your enemies. Moses didn't pray for his enemies like some of these, these, these people are telling us to do. No, you pray for yourself, you pray for your people. And you ask Elohim to judge the wickedness, the, wick, the wicked ones, and that you get everything that's yours. Everything that the, the thieves have stolen and, and, and murdered and robbed you to take away. Our ancestors' stuff included. Our inheritance included. You pray that Elohim destroy them and that he gives us everything when he moves us away from them. That's your prayer, sister, brother. If you want to see the power of Elohim, that's why the Torah is important. That's why they don't want you reading the Torah. You see, the Torah tells you exactly how you should conduct yourself before Elohim. And the Torah tells us exactly how we should conduct ourselves before our enemies. Those who hate us, those who want to murder us, destroy us, rob us, steal from us. He tells us exactly how we ought to deal with them. That's why, again, they don't want us in the Torah. Verse 25, verse 26, I'm sorry, verse 27. But Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart again, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto them, unto him, get you from me, and take heed of yourself, and see my face no more. For in that day you see my face, you shall die. And Moses said, you have spoken well, I will see your face no more. See, that's their attitude towards us. Get rid of them, cut them off, shut them down. If they say anything about them being the people of the Most High, make them seem like a fool. Use their preachers against them. Use their pastors and their bishops against them. Use whatever you can against them to quiet them down, to take away their voices. Use their women against them. Use their men against them. Use their children against them. Whatever you can use against, use it against them. Because we, we need to shut them down. That's what Pharaoh told Moses. Oh, you said you want to be so arrogant. You want to be so demanding. You think you, we owe you something. Then take it and get out of my face. And I better not ever see you again. Or I'm going to kill you if I do. Doesn't that sound just like those heathens? Doesn't that sound like those heathens? As I began this message, the Asian heathen who had the audacity to say Kim Potter was a good person. And Dante Wright, who did nothing, more or less, too bad, so sad. And that story goes on and on and on and on. I don't even have the time, nor will I waste any more time repeating their atrocities. 
against us, our people. Get out of my face, I'll kill you. Well, that show sure sounds familiar. But this I'll end with, my brothers and sisters. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to start asking why. It's time for us to consider and for us to understand that this judgment that you see going on on this whole planet, America included, this is the judgment of Elohim. And there's nothing that you should be trying to do to reverse it. These liars tell you, pray for your government, pray for these people. Look, don't listen to those people. He didn't tell Moses to pray for Pharaoh. He said, let me judge him. You just make sure you act for what's yours and that you don't leave none of your people behind except they don't want to come. And if they don't want to come, then whatever happens to Pharaoh happens to them. Otherwise, you bring your children out, you bring your women out, you know, you know, you bring your parents out, you take your property, you take everything that's yours with you when you leave. And understand that everything that they owe you, they're going to repay it, whether they want to or not. Why? Because Elohim says so. Don't forget that, brothers and sisters. DFG, again, the intelligent amongst us understand that we should always Never just take their word. Never just take their narrative and always consider. And one of the ways, an important word to you when you consider, an important word when you, you should be using when you, is ask, well, why would they be doing that to us? And how is that consistent to what they do to everybody else? And I can assure you, if your heart is right, you'll end up right here that knowledge will take you here. And that understanding of what's in here will keep you here. And then you will see the mighty hand of Elohim and his redemption for our people. DFG, talk to you later. Right now.